Okay, this clip of the video unfortunately is uh, sort of like to fill in a part of the video that was actually lost, which is bloody annoying. Um, I managed to actually repair the, uh, or re remove the pin from the uh, valve seat. And let me just show you what I did. Let me just cut this resistor off to show you a sort of like a reenactment basically of what I've did. If you imagine that pin stuck in there in this in this valve in this valve seat. So we push the pin in so you can't get to it. Come on. Okay so it's right in there deep inside the valve seat you can't get to it and you can't I can't get much closer than that because I think the camera loses focus but that it's right stuck inside the uh, in the valve seat. So what all I did was I went around the back of the valve um, and unsoldered it from the tag strip and bent the pin straight. And this is Andrew Elsfer and a couple of other people who suggested this. Bend this pin straight. And then what you can do is you can just push the pin out. And it, sure enough, if you put, push the pin so it's parallel and just give it a push, I'll show you in a moment. You can see that the uh, the pin. Uh, it's pushed out the top of the valve seat, and it really, as soon as you do that, it releases the pin that's snapped off. You see, it's like a, like a couple of jaws in there, and it's sort of like, it's in focus. So that's fine. I did that. It released the pin. You can push it back in, resold it back to where it was, uh, and then we don't have to replace the whole valve socket. It's just that one pin. So that was an excellent recovery. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, he's Andrew Elsworth. Have a look at his channel. Um, he's full of. Uh, very interesting sort of old valve radio repairs but a wealth of knowledge a very bright chap and um, I don't know what I'd do without him as a, as a number of others I must admit anyway let's move on and uh, let's have a look at uh, getting this thing back together right I want to check these uh, coupling capacitors on the output stage are uh, okay and they're not leaky so we're not going to damage the new valves we put in uh, so we're looking at these uh, Capacitors here. You can see this. Let me in a bit so you can see. There's a, a coupling capacitor from this anode to the to the grid of this amplifier here, and there's a couple of other decoupling capacitors here. We need to check all these caps, make sure that none of them are leaky. Um, they've got a very good re reputation for being reliable, uh, but we just need to just check that. Obviously, we put new valves, and we don't want to put anything under any unnecessary duress. Um, and there's a couple of other. Um, capacitors here in the uh, preamplifier stage as well which couple the anode through to the uh, uh, tone control circuitry and into the uh, first stage of the power amplifier. So this is just run through this again this is the Ferno amplifier here, preamplifier, power amplifier so it's section there and section there so that's your preamp there in the middle between my hands and that's the power amp there. <coughs> Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mega just to go across these capacitors and just check to see if there's any leakage at all. There shouldn't be anything. I'm going to do it at, uh, I think we'll do it at 250 volts. That'll be pretty pretty good sensible working voltage uh, just to check to make sure none of them are leaky. So we're across our first capacitor here. Here's our mega, 250 volts. Apply voltage across there, infinity. So that capacitor is excellent. That's no problem with that. It's not leaky. Let's try the other channel. It's slightly leakier that one, isn't it? So we might need to have a look at that because we don't want any biasing on the output stage. 10 meg is still pretty good, but at 250 volts we need to uh, be a little bit careful of the these capacitors, make sure they're okay. I don't really want to change them unless it's absolutely necessary, so probably what the best thing to do is power it up and just see what voltage we got on that grid. But that's clearly different between the other one. Let me just try reversing the polarity. Uh, obviously there's no semiconductors in this thing, so in theory it shouldn't make any difference at all. Um, I, mean, I expect the same volt, yeah, say 10 meg. So that capacitor is possibly a little bit leaky. Um, but I'm not too, too worried about it, but maybe we'll just disconnect it one end and uh, check it again out of circuit. Well, it's interesting actually, now it's out of circuit, it tests absolutely fine. Uh, so there's obviously nothing wrong with that capacitor. There's obviously a leakage path there somewhere. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Um, it should be exactly the same as the other channel, but I uh, can't see anything wrong with that capacitor, which is good, and I didn't really expect it to be anything wrong. So let's reconnect that back up, and we'll go through some of the others and uh, just make sure they're all okay as well. 
I've gone through all the capacitors in the output stage and everything looks fine. Uh, none, no heavy biasing on the, any of the uh, grids. The, the grids are only maybe a few volts above the cathode, no more than that. So that suggests that the amplifier is biased on, but not, not excessively. Uh, nothing appears to be getting hot, obviously, apart from the valves, so that all looks good as well. The preamplifier looks similarly okay. Um, those mustard uh, caps are very reliable, as I said before, and they seem to be okay now. So I think really the next thing to do is probably connect this up to the audio analyzer, have a listen to it, uh, or have a look at it, see what it responds like, uh, and just check make sure it hasn't got any excessive distortion. Now you've got to bear in mind a valve amplifier which tends to generate third harmonic distortion anyway will generate uh, a slightly high distortion and a transistor, a modern transistor amplifier will. But anything under sort of 0.8% would probably be okay. Uh, and it should, uh, I think the spec's about 0.5%, depending on what drive level you're giving it, obviously. So I think the thing to do now is uh, probably connect it up to the uh, dummy load, connect it up to the audio analyzer. Let's have a look to see what, uh, what sort of uh, distortion levels we're getting. Right, this is a, a low tension supply that's actually smoothened and actually supplies some of the valve heaters. It's a minus 24 volt biasing um, supply. It consists of an uh, electrolytic can with three uh, 600 microfarad capacitors in parallel, basically just a rectified supply. Uh, and this is what you're seeing on the, on the ripple. And so bear in mind this is a 24 volt supply uh, and we're on 100 millivolts per division. Uh, you can see we've got about 500 millivolts of ripple, which is fine. Uh, the only slightly strange thing is that it sounds, looks like the selenium rectifiers are starting to deteriorate, though they're clearly working okay at the moment. Um, and I don't really want to replace the selenium rectifiers because they don't necessarily fail. They may fail later on. Uh, but it does involve, if you're changing selenium rectifiers, it revol involves changing to a silicon diode and then adding a dropper resistor. Uh, and I think at the moment I don't think that's necess necessary, to be honest with you. It's, uh, it's not horrendous, the ripple's not horrendous. Uh, so I think it's probably fine. Um, so I'm gonna, that seems to be good. Now I'm quite happy with that ripple current, even though it's a not, not very symmetrical. It looks like one of the diodes isn't pulling its weight properly. or That's all I can think of, really. So the next step is to measure some of the other supplies, just to make sure that they're OK. And uh, they'll, they'll, they'll be the high-tension supplies. Um, and we'll check those and uh, see what we get there. This is one of our other DC supplies, uh, so let's get our ground point so we can see where we are. So our ground point is just here. We're on uh, 5 volts per division times 10, so that's 50 volts per division, 50, 100, 152, 250, 300 volts. So we're seeing at 300 volts. If I AC couple the scope, uh, and put the scope probe on times 1, it's easy to see. So this is 2 volts per division. Uh, Two, four, six, eight volts ripple at uh, on 300 volt supply. That's pretty good. That's fine. Uh, and what we'll do actually when we've uh, gone through and checked all these capacitors, which they appear to be fine, uh, I'll, I'll check to make sure there's no hum on the output. We could change the capacitors for something more uh, modern, but it's as I say again, it's going to be a major rework on the amplifier itself. You can see these are the, the capacitors here. And quite honestly, I'm quite happy with the way these capacitors are performing. Nothing's getting hot, uh, even though these caps are old. Uh, so I didn't really want to just change components willy-nilly. I'd rather sort of try and persevere with it. And of course, if there's, there is a problem with the amplifier at a later stage, we can always bring it back and uh, re recap the whole thing. But I really don't. Uh, I don't approve of that. I know a lot of people do. Um, these caps are uh, appearing to be okay. So it basically looks like the power supply section is okay. The coupling capacitors on the top end are fine. Um, it looks like the whole amplifier is sort of really okay to be uh, run through the analyzer now. Um, have a listen to it with some uh, speakers just to make sure there's no noise or anything. I tried it last night and it sounded fine. So let's, uh, let's uh, get it all connected up and uh, get it onto the audio analyzer. If I can turn it off. Your right, this test will be useful because it will just check the balance of the amplifier. So what I'm doing is I'm feeding a uh, signal from the uh, audio analyzer 8903 into the input of the Revox on radio position 1. This leaves monode and then the output's fed into the dummy load in 8 ohm load 
and we look at the output of the amplifier uh, to make sure that the waveforms come up sort of together. Uh, so let's just turn it up. You see they're coming up together. They're into clipping and back again. So that looks good. That looks fine. There's a slight lead in one channel there. Uh, I think it's the left-hand channel. Um, and that's down to the uh, linearity of the volume pot and there's not much else I can do about them replace the volume pot. It's minimal and it only affects very low level and you can bring that back in with the uh, um, balance control. So our fire drive looks good and into 8 ohms there doesn't seem to be any problem at all with uh, anything nasty going on there. So the next thing I think to do is just to check the channels for distortion on the uh, audio analyzer. Right, so let's do a type of harmonic distortion test on it. Uh, so we're looking at the right hand channel first. And this will be the display here, which should display our total harmonic distortion. If you look at the scope, we'll just take it just before clipping and then we'll measure the distortion. Don't want to run it too long. I don't want to uh, stress this amplifier. So let's run it up. Just back off clipping. 0.22%. Pretty acceptable for a valve amplifier. Very good actually. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to swap the two channels around. Look at the other channel and do the similar sort of thing. Put it up to clipping and just back it off again. 0 0.04 maybe slightly higher. It's pretty swings and roundabouts really. Certainly very acceptable, you wouldn't hear that. Um, I suppose of course we could also, also do a power measurement which is uh, I don't like pushing these old amplifiers particularly hard, but we could do a brief power measurement just to make sure it's producing the power it wants. So I need to set up a TP so I can actually monitor the channel I'm looking at. So bear with me, I'll set up a set up the uh, equipment and we'll do a power of analysing on it. Alright, let's start to look at uh, uh, what channel we're on. We're on the left hand channel, uh, so we're just going to do a power measurement. So what this involves is applying, running the amplifier up just short of clipping and looking at the power analyzer here. So I'm going to go into a, a special function 19.08. Right hand meter will now display watts. In, let's push the amplifier up to clipping. Eight point three watts. Okay, so it's eight point three watts per channel. Uh, both channels driven. Now you've also got to remember that it depends how this trans the transformer has been adjusted, and it depends what load it's it's driving into. Uh, you can actually alter the secondaries of the uh, transformer to um, match your speaker terminals. I'm not going to alter that because it's been obviously set up for the customer. Uh, I'm not sure what it's set to. It's probably set to eight ohms, um, but. Uh, it, it, it's delivering around about what it should do. Uh, uh, maybe the power supply is a bit saggy. Uh, maybe the selenium rectifiers are a little bit, you know, the, the HT is a little bit low. Although when I tested it, all these rails are well in spec um, under zero drive condition. But obviously, when you start to pull current out of the amplifier, stuff's going to sag. Um, so it basically looks like the amplifier is working perfectly okay. As you can see, there's nothing in the way of ripple and noise. I mean that's that's 20 millivolts. It's just very very quiet amplifier. That's why I just turn it up and just see. So it's it's you see there's a slight amount of 50 hertz but it's less than 20 millivolts. You won't hear that on uh, on it through the speakers. Let's try the other channel. More or less the same slightly less even so pretty sure that this uh, amplifier is uh, <coughs> excuse me pretty safe to uh, be used uh, uh, and I think really it's just going to be a case to put a bo box it up, so bench circuit on the on the bench for a day. Make sure it hasn't got any any funny noise and clicks and whistles. Obviously, so under, go underneath, clean all the um, clean all the switches and things like that, and uh, basically send it back to the customer and see if he's happy with it. But it certainly it it's all appears okay. I've done exactly what he wanted, he just basically wanted it going, he didn't want to replace any components that didn't need replacing unless it's absolutely necessary, that's exactly what I've done. So um, let's get the top on it and let's get it, uh, put it through some its paces. Okay I've just finished the frequency response of this amplifier, it's quite amazing actually, I really wasn't expecting a frequency response as flat as this, but as you can see even down to 20 hertz. It's only dropping 2 dB. I mean, that's incredible. You've got to bear in mind that it's trying to pass a 20 hertz signal through a transformer. Um, 
and that the top end rise is insignificant, less than half a dB. Call for a dB. It's more or less ruler flat. I, and I really am not expecting that. That is um, quite, in my mind, it's amazing. Really, really quite impressive frequency response. Very flat. You see that the um, the uh, which is the left-hand channel or channel one, as it's known here, is slightly lower again than the other amplifier by two dB. But to be honest with you, two dB shouldn't really be that noticeable. One dB is supposed to be the smallest amount of audio level that you can detect. Two dB will be barely noticeable, to be honest with you. And that can be adjusted with the balance control. It, that's basically down to the uh, the volume control on the uh, uh, on the uh, Revox itself is turned quite low down. If I'd set the volume control to halfway and did that again, you'd probably find these levels are pretty pretty uh, even. To be honest with you, it's not a problem with the gain in the amplifier. It's, as I said, it's down to the the volume pot itself. Um, really blown away with those frequency response um, charts. I think what I'll do now is I might try and do a distortion versus frequency uh, plot, something that you probably haven't seen me do on this analyzer before. So this, um, see if I can set that up. Uh, if I can't, I'll probably just uh, box the thing up and just have a listen to it and see what it sounds like. It sounds lovely actually, it sounds very nice. Um, but clearly, you know, the performance of this amplifier is uh, quite impressive. So let's uh, see if I can get this uh, frequency versus distortion set up. Right, let's demonstrate this amplifier with a piece of piano music I found on the internet and I'll put a link to the uh, composer's site, or not composer, the, the person who's actually playing it. Uh, it's, I think it's fantastic and uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll put a link into it and have, have a listen to it and uh, see what you think. But uh, this piece of music shouldn't be copyright, I should be able to get away with playing this without any copyright uh, issues. So let's give this a play. Uh, hopefully it will sound reasonable through the internal microphones. I'm not driving it too hard so it hopefully won't go into sort of like too much um, AGC on the amplifiers and things like that on the microphones of the uh, recorder. So let's play it and have a listen to what you think. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, well, to be honest with you, I mean, that sounds lovely. It sounds fine to me. Uh, no noise, no noticeable distortion in my hearing. When I did run it through the audio analyzer, the frequency, uh, the frequency versus distortion test, um, below 100 hertz, there is significant distortion of about 2% and it rises back up at the higher frequencies. Now, I think that's probably down to possibly interaction with the power supply. Maybe a recap on the power supply would help, but to be honest with you, listening to that, it sounds fine. Uh, so I'm happy with the performance. I'm going to contact the seller, see if he's happy with that, but as far as I'm concerned, this is the finish of this amplifier. I've enjoyed it. It's been nice to work on a valve amplifier. It's a, certainly a nice sounding amplifier and uh, I think uh, I'd like to do some more valve amplifiers if I can. Unfortunately they're very expensive and I can't afford to actually buy one myself but I mean I'm sure they will come along. Maybe some, some people will sell them in and uh, have them repaired or restored or whatever they want. Uh, run to the bottom line again this customer didn't want um, components changed unnecessarily. Um, as far as I'm concerned if this was my amplifier I'd be very happy with it. Uh, I'd run it for a, you know, give it a run it for six months or a year, and if it deteriorates over, over time, yes, we we know the capacitors uh, on the uh, grid coupling stages are okay, so none of the valves are at any risk. The smoothing capacitors have appeared to be fine, and funny enough, the electrolytics that this Revox uses are the same ones the Roden Schwartz signal generator uses, and they test as a very low ESR as well. The Siemens capacitors high quality, even though they're sort of 45, 50 years old, plus uh, they, this amplifier, I don't think it's done a lot of, had a lot of work to be honest with you. Thanks for watching and uh, hopefully more to come.